Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and the music of Matty Malley. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Costello, Costello, you're late again. Well, I was watching the girls admiring Lana Turner's new necklace. Lana Turner has a new necklace? Yes, made out of her old wedding rings. <laughs> hey, who is that girl you were out with last night? Ah, oh, that's my that's my new girl. What's she like, Lou? What's she like? She likes bourbon, scotch, gin, rye, wine, scotch, <laughs> bourbon. Look, where did you meet this girl? Oh, at the Palladium. I asked her for a dance. Did you dance the Foxtrot, the Tango, or the Waltz? The One Step. The One Step? One step and I changed my mind about dancing with her. <laughs> Why, wasn't she a good dancer? No, but she makes you forget about dancing during intermission. <whistles> when I took her home, I kissed her goodnight and got a real kick out of it. Uh, she kisses that good? No, her father caught us. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Instead of running around every night with a different girl, why don't you settle down and get married? Luke? Not me, Abbott. Getting married is like going to a cafeteria. Like a cafeteria? Yeah, you grab what you want and pay for it later. <laughs> You'll need a man like me. Appoint me sheriff, and I'll go from house to house and pinch every cook. <laughs> no, no, not every cook. You mean you'll pinch every crook? You'll pinch what you like, and I'll pinch what I like. <laughs> Costello, you... You'll pinch what you like, and I'll pinch what I like. You said that. You said that. Now. Costello, why were you late tonight? Well, I overslept that, but I had a very peculiar dream. I dreamed I was a pincushion in a, in a room full of balloon dancers. And am I mad? Why are you mad? Well, I woke up just when things were beginning to pop. Right. <laughs> After next week, I'm going to get my own room. I can't sleep with my brother Pat anymore. All night long, he dreams he's Roy Rogers. Well, why should that disturb you? He also dreams I'm Trigger. Uh- <laughs> Heaven, if you will appoint me Sheriff Vincino, I'll clean up the town. I'll mop up all the pool rooms. I'll clean out all the saloons. I'll scour the alleys. How can you do that? On the side, I'm a street cleaner. <laughs> Costello, if I make you the new sheriff, you've got a lot of brave men to follow. Listen to the records of the background. Sheriff Jones, Redcoats, Northwest Mounted, 1931. Oh, yeah. Sheriff Brown, Redcoats, Northwest Mounted, 1938. Sheriff Costello, Sports Coats, Bullock Spaceman, 1975. <laughs> Look, Luke, to do criminal work, you have to know something about the law. For instance, do you know how to put up a defense? Well, sure. All you have to... Could I have that again? I said, do you know how to put up a defense? Why should I put up a defense? I already put up at the wall around my house. <laughs> I also got at the hedge in the backyard. Why do I have to put up a defense? No, no, Costello. When I say you put up a defense, I don't mean you put up a fence like you uh, do when you put up a fence. I mean a defense... 
Like when you put up a defense. Yeah, but I think you're nuts. Now you say... <laughs> it's no use. You wouldn't know how to act in a criminal investigation anyhow. Oh, is that so? Yeah. I was down in a morgue yesterday to see a gangster that was killed. I lifted up the sheet, and there he lay, the corpus delicatessen. The... <laughs> that dummy. Corpus delicti, not corpus delicatessen. This was a corpus delicatessen. He was stabbed with a salami. Right. <laughs> Cleaning up Encino, but you didn't have to dump that heap of rubbish here on the stage. Rubbish? Oh, pardon me, it's Costello. I... <laughs> Honey, I'm appointed Costello as sheriff of Encino. He's going to chase all the criminals out of town. Well, buddy, you ought to put me on that job. You know I'm a regular bloodhound. From the looks of your ears, you must be pot cocker spaniel, too. <laughs> I don't have to take any more insults from you, Costello. Huh. I can see through you. I've got eyes like a hawk. And a beak to match. <laughs> Costello. How dare you insult my wife? She's beautiful. Why, before I married her, she had men falling in her feet. And why not? She was refereeing fights at the Legion Stadium. <laughs> oh, you pigeon puss pop eyed penguin. When I was a girl living in the country, boys used to court me from ten miles away. They had to. They were afraid to come any closer. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, honey. Say, that's a pretty hat you're wearing, dear. Oh, I just bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think I should wear it to one side off the face? If you're smart, you'll wear it over your face. <laughs> oh, low life. Low uh, life? Uh, by the way, buddy, I got some new shoes, too. Do you like them? They're pumps. On, on you, they look good. Well, thanks. Considering that your legs look like pump handles. <laughs> oh, how dare you? I have beautiful legs. You're bowling. My wife is not bowling. She's the only woman in the world that can walk down a bowling alley while the game is on. <laughs> oh, Costello, for insulting my wife, I'm not going to make you sheriff of Encino, and I'm not going to give you this beautiful badge. Oh, please have it. Let me be the sheriff. I've always wanted a badge. Everybody's got a badge but me. A cop has a badge, a fireman has a badge, even a little boy scout has a badge. Abbott, I've just got to have a badge. But uh, why do you have to have a badge? I'm tired of holding up my pants with my teeth. <laughs> oh, all right. I hereby appoint you Sheriff of Encino. Step forward and I'll pin this badge on your shirt. Thank you, Abbott. I mean, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, uh, well, out. Hold still, I'm tearing your shirt I ain't wearing any shirt <laughs> Come on, we're going over to the sheriff's office in Encino right now So you can start to work immediately <laughs> Well, Sheriff Costello, you can take over at once I've got it, Abbott What? The man broke into your room? Yes, ma'am I'll put on the police radio right away Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Go to 237 Mulberry Street. An old maid found a burglar in a room. Proceed with caution. The old maid is armed. <laughs> well, Costello, you're catching on to your job fast. Oh, darling, I'm glad I found you here. I have news for you. I just picked up a cent. Here's nice cents more. Grab a bus and get out of town. Uh, <laughs> cut that out, Costello. My wife may be in trouble. Oh, that's right, buddy dear. Something terrible has just happened. What did he do? Find your birth certificate? Uh... <laughs> Cost... <laughs> Cost... Costello, pay attention to my wife. As the sheriff of Encino, it's your duty to hear her out. Well, if it'll make you happy, I'll throw her out. Uh, uh, no... <laughs> Never mind him, dear. Let's hear your story. Well, for the last couple of nights, there's been a lot of strange noises. Screams and gunshots coming from that empty house next door to us. Suddenly, at two o'clock in the morning, as I was standing by the stove baking fudge... Ah! What happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh, she burned her fudge. She burned... <laughs> no, I saw a mysterious man peering out of the attic window... He made an ugly face at me like this. No, no, don't do that. I haven't made the face yet. How can I tell? <laughs> Quiet, Costello. This may be more serious than you think. I'd like to see the sheriff. Oh, that's him! That's the mysterious man! Costello, look! It's Bella Lugosi. Bella 
Lugosi. <clears throat> Just a minute, Costello. Mr. Lugosi. I am the chairman of the uh, Committee for Crime Prevention in Encino. Now, uh, just what is the nature of your complaint? Well, I have put it in a simple language that even a moron can understand. Step aside, Abbott. He's talking to me. <laughs> now, listen, Lugosi, I'm the sheriff around here, and I'm going to ask you some questions. Now, what were those screams in your house at midnight? That was my business. And what about those gunshots? That's my business. Ask him about those dead bodies in the basement. He's also my business. This guy is doing a heck of a business. <laughs> that settles it, Costello. You, as Sheriff, will have to investigate and search Lugosi's house tonight at midnight. You will like the house, Costello. It's the only house in Encino where every room has a bat. <laughs> And a strange man should suddenly appear with a long, sharp knife in his hand and offer to cut your throat. Yes? Refuse him. <laughs> Abbott, take back the badge. I don't want to be sheriff anymore. Get me out of here now, Abbott. <laughs> That's only half the fun, folks. Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this. Susan Miller with Matty Malnick and his orchestra has a springtime story about the Dickie Bird song. A Dickie Bird whispered, haven't you heard? Spring is here, spring is here, spring is here. A little crow sang a happy hello, my favorite time of the year. A little frog sang a song on his log. Lose your blues, lose your blues, lose your blues. And you and I fell in love in reply on hearing the dicky bird's news. If you have to look around to find the reason for such a wonderful thing, you can blame it on the sentimental season. Falling in love is done in the spring. A bobolink Looked at us with a wink At a boy, at a girl Nothing's wrong When you're in love You'll go swinging along Singing a Dickie Bird song If you have to look around To find the reason such a wonderful thing You can blame it on the sentimental season Falling in love is done in the spring The bobolink looked at us with a wink At a boy, at a girl, nothing's wrong When you're in love you'll go swinging along Singing a dicky bird song That's all. Well, Costello, here we are at Bella Lugosi's house. Have it. It's awful dark in that house. But you've got to go in there. You're the sheriff. You've got to go in there and look for the trouble. Couldn't I look for it out here? There's more light. 
<laughs> Look at me. I'm not scared. Shh, Abbott. I think I hear something. Or is it my imagination? <laughs> Thank goodness it was only my imagination. <laughs> Well, Sheriff Costello, I see you have come to investigate my house. Come in. I'm making myself a sandwich. What kind of a sandwich? It's a rattlesnake burger. <laughs> covered with pickled toads and diced bat wings. Do you put ketchup on it? What? To get heartburn? No. <laughs> It's too bad you won't be here for breakfast. We are having shrouded wheat. <laughs> shrouded wheat? Abbott, look, there's a casket in the corner with rubber sheets in it. Rubber sheets in it? Yes, I line all my caskets with rubber sheets. So the rain can't get in. Why? My beer is the dry beer. <laughs> Hey, Costello, look at that funny-looking machine over there in the corner. Now, that's my Sears machine. On that, I manufacture robots. Get it, Abbott? Sears are robots. <laughs> One of you will soon be dead. <laughs> soon be dead. Which one? Don't be so choosy. <laughs> Abbott, I'm getting out of here. I don't like the looks of this place. Look at the grandfather's clock in the corner. Oh, lots of people have grandfather's clocks. With their grandfathers hanging in it like a pendulum? on them? <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. Question Lugosi about the house. Mr. Lugosi, where is the former owner of this house? Do you see that pile of freshly dug dirt in the corner? Yes, sir. Well, that's not a vegetable garden. Hmm, <laughs> that's strange. I thought I felt a draft on my neck. What's strange about that? I have no neck. <laughs> Mr. Lugosi, what are you whispering for? I was born in a library. I had to stay there six months. How come? My father lost his card. Hey, look, Costello. There's a skeleton in this room. Abbott, there's two skeletons in this room. Two skeletons? Yeah, I just jumped out of my skin. <laughs> hey, Abbott, look, Lugosi has just disappeared through that wall. Pardon me, Abbott. I want to see somebody outside. Who? Me. Uh, <laughs> come back here, Costello. You're scared? Why don't you sing? Go ahead and sing. It'll keep up your courage. Carry me back to old Virginia. You keep singing like that and they'll drag you back. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a ghost. I'm the ghost of Richard, the lion-hearted. Who are you? I'm Costello, the chicken-livered. <laughs> Mr. Ghost, Costello is the sheriff, and we've got to investigate this house. Why don't you start in the cellar? Here, I'll open the door for you. You can go right down those stairs. <laughs> Costello, where are you? I'm down in the cellar, Rabbit, but look out for that first step. It's a Lulu. <laughs> It's all right, Costello. Here I am. I'll turn on this flashlight and we'll take a look around. Yeah, but quick, look over there. There's a body on the floor. Is he dead? I can't tell. His head is missing. Uh... I'm getting out of here, Abbott. Costello, what are we? Nicer men. I don't know about you, but I'm glad there's no cat around. <laughs> look. Mila Lugos is back. Costello, it is indeed regrettable that you choose to prowl around in my cellar. 
I'm in a bloodthirsty mood. So far this week, I've only killed nine people. This guy sounds like a California driver. <laughs> Just a minute, Lugosi. Costello's the sheriff of this town, and you've got a dead man lying down here in your cellar. Yes, I know. He lives here. But he's dead. He's dead, I tell you. Why don't you throw him out? I can't. His rent is paid up until June 1st. <laughs> Come on, Castello. We've got to continue with the search. Well, go ahead with your search. If you want me, I'll be in the morgue lying on my slab. That's where I'm happiest. I'm lying on my slab. Don't look now, Abbott, but I think he's a little slab happy. <laughs> Come on, Castello. Let's look in this room. Open the door. Costello, what in the world was that? I don't know, and I ain't getting down off this channel here to find out. <laughs> Come on down here, Costello. Hey, look. I just found a secret closet. Let's open it. Now, don't touch that door, Costello. Look at that sign. It says, this closet has never been opened in over 175 years. I don't believe that. I'm going to open it. The British are coming! The British are coming! Costello! Costello, where are you? I'm hiding over here under this bed. Come on, crawl out from under that bed. Okay. Now, I wonder who put that piggy bank under here. <laughs> hey, look, Costello. There's a panel sliding open in that wall. Ah, gentlemen, how can I ever thank you? You've released me from a hypnotic spell that I've been under for over a thousand years. Oh, Abbott, she's beautiful. Tell me, miss, are you a mummy? Oh, no, I'm not even married. <laughs> Gee, you're lovely. Where did you come from? I remember coming here on Noah's Ark with all the animals. They all came in pairs. The birds came in pairs. The rabbits came in pairs. Did everything come in pairs? Everything but the worms. They come in apples. <laughs> what are you two doing here? Well, we're trying to solve the secrets of this house. I can help you. I know this house. I've got the inside. Eh, uh, what you've got on the outside ain't bad either. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful, You didn't Costello. have enough material, eh? Costello. Costello. Lou, 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 be careful. This girl is a vampire. She may be dangerous. And besides, she's a thousand years old. You ought to be able to handle a rabbit. She's the same age as your wife. Right. <laughs> Which one of you gallant gentlemen opened that panel and released me? I did. Ah, I'm going to reward you. Come, put your arms around me. I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> there, how was that? Abbott. This kid is more than a thousand years old. Ah, oh, you're very sweet. You remind me of an actor I used to go with 500 years ago. Really? You went with an actor 500 years ago? What was his name? Al, Al Jolson. <laughs> hey, what's that? Oh, it's, it's Lugosi coming back. He mustn't find me here. I've got to get back behind my panel. But before I go, you may take my hand and kiss it. Thank you. Thank you. Costello, what are you doing? I'm kissing your hand. But Costello, the girl is gone. She's gone back behind that panel. Now, wasn't she sweet? She gave me her hand a kiss. I've got her hand and I'm holding it in mine and she's gone. Now, isn't that? 
She's gone. Oh, Mom, I still got her hand up. Quiet. What are you trying to do? Wake up the living? <laughs> Costello, Costello, it's Bela Lugosi. He's coming towards us. Well, Sheriff Costello, I got to go now before I get into trouble with the police. Are you afraid of the police because you killed those nine people last week? No, it's not that. Are you afraid of the police because of the dastardly crimes you've committed? No, it's not that. Then why are you afraid of the police? Yes, why? Why do you have to leave here so suddenly? Oh, I just remembered I left my car parked in a one-hour zone. And you know those Los Angeles cops. Good night, Mr. Costello. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Lugosa. Isn't he a lovely <laughs> chap, Costello? Yes, he sure is. I'd like to have known him when he was alive. <laughs> Costello with a final word. Folks, the contest we are running on our Saturday morning Abbott and Costello Kids show now has a jackpot of over $29,000. Get into this contest, folks. We believe it is the biggest contest ever and for the greatest cause. The purpose is to combat juvenile delinquency. And by entering, you can win a $5,000 mink coat, a $5,000 airplane, a $3,000 trailer, a live baby elephant, thousands of dollars worth of diamonds, and loads of other big prizes totaling over $29,000. Listen Saturday morning over most of these stations. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Listen each Wednesday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick's orchestra. This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. (laughs) 